Terrence Crawford is set to return, but against who? Plus, Eddie Hearn has a new deal for Team Wilder. We break it all down next. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment, help us hit 10,000 subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Friday's Check Hook. Terrence Bud Crawford may have a bout official for March at the Mecca of Boxing, Madison Square Garden, against Louis Colazzo. I get it. I get it. I get it. I do. It's not Spence. It's not Porter. It's not a unification fight. I get it. I do. But before y'all go all crazy and start... Crying and this and that. Let, let's keep in mind two things. First, Spence, Porter, Keefe Poo, Pac, all have dates. None of them consulted with Terrence Crawford. Um, so Terrence Crawford just basically went down the line. Also, Crawford is taking the biggest challenge of any of the welterweight champs. Think about it. Spence is fighting a freaking lightweight. Okay, he's fighting a lightweight. He's fighting a guy two weight divisions small who has no chance of beating him. Uh, Keith Thurman is scheduled to fight Josecito Lopez. We all know Colazzo would beat Josecito Lopez. Uh, Manny Pacquiao is fighting AB. Colazzo is clearly, clearly better than any of those fighters. And by a wide margin. You know, I, I, at least considering that Mikey's not a lightweight. I mean, Mikey's not a welterweight. That Mikey's a lightweight. Keep that in mind, you know. He's the only guy fighting a top 10 guy in his own size. So if you're going to get on Bud, then get on one of the other champions first. Because they're t taking uh, a, an easier fight than Crawford is. For the same reason I didn't get on Spence when he fought Peterson. Because he just went down the line. All these other fighters were, were, were busy. So I'll, I'll take the best guy available. Which at that time... Was Lamont Peterson? Was I thrilled with the Peterson fight? No, but I can't complain about it. It was the best fight that he could make. You guys didn't want him to fight Cavalakis. Um, you guys didn't want Bud to fight Cavalakis. Who do you want him to fight? Name the guy at 147 pounds that you want Bud to fight. He's either not available or not willing. Colazzo is the man. Colazzo is always up to the challenge. And Colazzo took the fight. The other guy I'm okay with is Porter. Porter is taking on Ugas, right? So I give him a pass. In all seriousness, I do. I'm a huge Ugas fan. And Ugas has earned a title shot. But you really can't argue he's much more deserving of a title shot than Colazzo is. The Porter-Ugas fight is cherry-picking gone wrong. I mean, if this is Porter trying to get an easy gimme, he's got... And I'm not saying Porter's going to lose. This is going to be a very good fight. I could, see, I could honestly see either guy winning. Um, but this is going to be real tough for Porter. This is not going to be an easy night for Porter. Um, so back to Crawford. Look, Colazzo has earned a title shot. Yes, Luis Colazzo has earned a title shot. Let's be real, he has. Um, is he going to beat the pound-for-pound pound number one best fighter in the world, which is Terrence Crawford? No, that's highly unlikely. I'll be real. Uh, this would be a historical, monumental upset, right? It, it, and Bud will likely take the challenger apart. But Colazzo is 38-7, has plenty of good wins. Um, recently has picked up wins over Perella and, and, and Samuel Vargas, who y'all were impressed with against Conor. You guys were saying how good Vargas was. Well, Colazzo took him apart. So, look. It's... you. you if you're going to complain, you need to tell me which champion took a tougher fight than Bud and, and who Bud should have fought. You need to give me those two things. Otherwise, you're just wanting to hear yourself complain because you don't like Crawford or you don't like the fight. But there's not a better fight to be made. Klaus is a game challenge. Always has been and, and <laughs> seemingly always will be. I know he's 37, but he, he still comes to fight and he still puts up a fight. Um... Look, this fight at Madison Square Garden against a native New Yorker is a better, more compelling fight and a p bigger payday than a fight with Kavis Liakis, the mean machine. It is. Uh, it just is. Klaus is a bigger name. He's a bigger draw. He's a more proven fighter. And that's not a knock on Kavis Liakis. Maybe he'll be a good fighter. It's just right now he's not a draw. Right now there was no demand on that fight. And I did a, I did a video saying, but please don't fight him. And he's fighting Klaus So. So if you're okay with 
what, what, what Colossal's name what was being used as an opponent for Spence, which was, according to Michael Coppinger, I think it was Coppinger, that that fight was, uh, you know, all but official. That fight was going to be made official uh, for Dallas. And uh, Colazzo said he had no idea. He'd never heard of that before. And then a couple of days later, he had announced that he was fighting Spence. Um, but you guys were fine with Colazzo when he was being used as an opponent for, for Spence. That was fun. Um, you guys were excited when his name was mentioned as a return opponent for Keith Thurman. So he's good enough for Thurman, and he's good enough for Spence, but he's not good enough for, 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 for Bud. Well, that just shows you how much better you think Bud is than the other two. I agree with you, Bud is better than the other two. And I think Bud will win this fight. It would be a, a monumental upset if Claus will won. That being said, Claus will earn a title shot, and he's a good opponent. And he's a tougher opponent than any of the other major welterweights are fighting. Those are all facts. And if, you, if you're being real about it, you'd agree with those. And it's a native New Yorker in Madison Square Garden. And it, it will likely sell more than Keith Thurman versus Hercesito Lopez. Or Sean Porter versus Ugas. It's a bigger fight, a bigger money fight. Oh, so why would he not take it? Look... I mean, you guys know I, I think Bud is the number one best fighter in the world. Is, is Colossal the first name I, I, I think of when I'm trying to pick the best possible opponent for the best fighter in the world? No. I, I'd want to see Spence. If I can't see Spence, I want to see Porter. If I can't see Porter, I want to see Thurman. If I can't see... You know, and so on down the line. But those guys aren't available. And as soon as you get to the next... The, the first fighter who's available, the best fighter who's available, that's Colossal. I want to see Colasso fight Danny Garcia in uh, New York versus Philly, all Puerto Rican scrap. I think Colasso would win. You guys are, are not respecting Colasso. He's a good fighter. He's a very good fighter. And he's earned a title shot. What he does with it, well, that's yet to be seen. Obviously, I'm not picking him, nor would I pick anyone to beat Terrence Bud Crawford. But there's no complaining about this fight. If you want to complain, complain about one of the other welterweight champions. None of them checked in, tried to negotiate with Terrence Crawford. And if you're upset about this, you're acknowledging that Bud's better than the other welterweights, which he is. Let me know what you guys think. I'll leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, does this fight move the needle for you at all? Um, do you think this is cherry picking? I don't. I'm with it. I'm with it 100. I, I think it's the best fight that's left for Crawford. Um, but let me, know what you, let me know what you think. Uh... Next topic and last topic for today, uh, one that we touch on over and over again, Eddie Hearn, Deontay Wilder, and Anthony Joshua. Um, Eddie Hearn seems to be on board with making an AJ Wilder fight after all, or is he? Eddie was always going to make this fight on his term uh, terms, um, and he always said the fight was a ways off. However, he seems to be ready. I want to know if this is a mind tactic, um, if this is a Jedi mind trick. Getting Wilder's head just ahead of the Fury fight. That fight is a week away. Think about it. That fight's just a week away. Why bring this fight up now? Why not wait a week? Is Eddie being a hundred? Does he really? Is he really prepared to offer Wilder a two-fight deal? Well, that's yet to be seen. You have to admit the timing's a bit strange, right? The timing's a little weird. We haven't heard from or seen Eddie's client since he beat Povetkin. But now he's offering Wilder a multi-fight deal one week out. Which means two things. Right? This means two things. He's offering uh, Wilder a two-fight deal. Which means two things has to come to fruition. A, he's picking Wilder to beat Fury. Obviously, right? He's not going to offer Wilder a fight as a guy if Wilder loses. So he's picking Wilder to win. And B, he's picking Wilder to beat AJ because it's a two-fight deal. Think about it. It's a multi-fight deal. The only There's only intrigue in a rematch if Wilder beats AJ. Let me repeat that. There's only interest in this fight if Wilder beats AJ. Right? Eddie Hearn's a promoter. If Wilder beats AJ, there's interest in this. It is only interest if Wilder beats AJ. Eddie Hearn knows this. He's a promoter. He goes 
Hearn goes on and on and on and on and on about how unpopular Wilder is and how no one cares about Deontay Wilder. Now, no one even knows who he is. Then why do you want to make two fights with him? Why would you want to beat him once and then Hearn says he'll knock him out in three rounds. So if he's a nobody and no one's ever heard of him and you knock him out in three rounds, why would you make a rematch with him? You wouldn't. The only reason you'd make a rematch with him is if your fighter lost to him, which is obviously what you're projecting. Right? So there's no interest in a, in a rematch if AJ wins. Is there interest in a Takam, Carlos Takam rematch? A Joseph Parker rematch? Of course not. No, no one cares about those guys. And that's what Hearn is saying about Deontay Wilder. Nobody cares about him. Okay, if that's true, why are you trying to make two fights with him? This is a mind game. He's, look, there are still plenty of fighters in the... The zone, matchroom, Eddie Hearn side of the pond, which he can get 20 to 25 million for all. You have Usyk, you have Big Baby Millie, you have Dillian White versus Shore, two winner. You have all of those options. He wants Deontay Wilder to lose, and he wants to get in his head, and this is how he's doing it by offering him a fight before his, a week out before the biggest fight of his life. You guys think I'm crazy? You think I'm wrong? I mean, there is so much love. Eddie Hearn has invested in so many heavyweights. Usyk, uh, Dillian White, Big Baby Miller. He has so many heavyweights on his side of the pond. Why is he offering this now a week out before the fight? It doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's a real offer. But I do not think Deontay Wilder is fighting um, Anthony Joshua, nor will he be offered a real contract to fight him in April. A, because I don't think Deontay Wilder is going to beat Tyson Fury. A, and B, because Eddie Hearn's already got guaranteed money. on. His, he can keep the money in the Eddie Hearn stable. Right, you heard this, right, with, 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 with Errol Spence and the PBC. No, they're going to keep Errol Spence on the Errol Spence side of the, side of the, of the fence until he's cleaned out the whole neighborhood. Eddie Hearn's going to do the same thing. Eddie Hearn is going to have AJ fight Usyk. He's going to have him fight... Big Baby, Dillian White, whoever else. He's going to have to fight all those guys before he has a fight with Wilder or Fury. I'm just letting you know how it is. Um, but leave your thoughts, comments below. Do you think this is a real offer? I do not. Uh, I think this is some kind of mind trick that Eddie's playing. He's trying to get into Wilder's head. Um, but let me know. Do you think there's a legitimate chance that he's going to offer him a two-fight deal? And if so, why would he do that if he doesn't think that um, Wilder's going to win? So, uh, thoughts, comments below. Hope that all made sense. I know I had a bit of a rambling today. Um, but I hope you all had a very, very happy Thanksgiving. For Friday's Check Hook, this is 3D Boxing. Signing off, saying thank you, and God bless. Enjoy 3D Boxing Vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingvlog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.